Don't let tech Twitter tell you any differently. Testing is a critical component of your stack. But a better question is what testing is right for you and your team. Kent C. Dodds coined the idea of a testing trophy that helps to give you a guideline as to where you should spend your time when working with tests. In this model, integration tests play a large role because of the value it brings and our tooling makes it easy to implement. And at the top, we have end-to-end -end tests which provide even more value because of its ability to have so much coverage when using tools like Playwright to test user flows throughout the application. But we're gonna see how to make those integration and end-to-end -end tests even better by using Apple Tools Eyes to give your test visions to see what your visitors are actually seeing rather than just a virtualization of it. Hey team, I'm Colby Fayok. I make weekly tutorials helping to solve real problems with the tools of the web. And today we're going to learn about how you can level up your integration and end-to-end -end tests inside Next.js with Apple Tools Eyes. This video is brought to you and sponsored by Apple Tools. Apple Tools is a visual testing platform that gives you the ability to actually test what your visitors are using and interacting with. We're about to dig in and see how much impact that can have, but head over to spacejelly.dev slash Apple Tools and get started with your free account today. To test this out, I created a fake news website called 100 Succession Fans, anyone? Well, it's really just going to give us a way to easily test out what this looks like for a realistic looking site. Now, just as a heads up, all this content, these images and these articles are completely fake. I use ChatGPT and Dali in order to generate these so we can actually have a realistic looking site. If you want to follow along yourself, you can find a link to the starter in the description. But to start off, we need to actually be able to run our tests with something. And while Apple Tools works with pretty much any testing library that you have, we're going to use Playwright as a way to run those tests. Now, I've gone ahead and already installed Playwright by running the init command, and at the bottom of my Playwright config file, I made sure to uncomment out my web server, and I'm actually running npm run dev against my localhost server. And then I updated one of the example tests to hit localhost 3000 and make sure that it has the 100 inside of the title, just like the actual page itself, and we can see if I now run those tests, we can see them all passing. Now, nothing I did here so far was really anything special when it comes to Playwright. The only thing that I did was set up that web server and update the test a little bit, but now we can start to look at how we're going to apply Apple Tools eyes. To use Apple Tools, we're going to use the Apple Tools Eyes Playwright SDK that's going to give us an ability to easily install this and set it up inside of our app. As usual, installation is as easy as running this npm install command. So I'm going to set that up inside of my terminal. And once that's finished, we can see that the next step would be to actually set up our API key. And we see we have a few ways in order to set that where we can just export it, we can set it if we're on Windows, we can even programmatically set it using the actual eyes API. But I like to manage my environment variables inside of a .env file. So what we can actually do is inside of Playwright, they already have .env set up and ready to use. So I'm just gonna simply uncomment out .env. Now that means we need to set up that .env file. So in the root of my project, I'm gonna create a new file .env.local and inside I'm gonna add Apple Tools API key which we'll set up in a second, but back inside of the Playwright config, by default, .env is only going to look inside to find .env, not .env local. So we need to specially configure it to do so. So inside of this config method, I'm going to pass in an argument with a new object. Where I'm gonna simply say path, and let's say, we want it to look for .env.local. Now we don't have our eyes test yet, but we can run npm run test just to make sure that that's working. And we can see that we currently don't have any issues. Now heading over to Apple Tools, if this is your first time using Apple Tools, make sure you sign up for a free account. But once we're inside of our dashboard, if you haven't run any tests yet, you should probably see something similar to this. But what we wanna do is grab our API key. And the way we can do that is going up to this little avatar at the top, we can see my name and my email, and we can see my API key, where I'm gonna simply copy that value and back inside of that .env it out local file, we're gonna paste in that key. Now make sure you don't share this key, don't commit it to your code as this is your personal API key and shouldn't be shared with anybody publicly. But now we can actually start to dig in and get things set up to use Apple Tools Eyes. And we can see in this usage example, we first pull in our dependencies, we then use Playwright to go to the page that we wanna test, but then we can create a new instance of Eyes where the first thing we do is we open our eyes. And you can really think of like your eye or a camera where the first thing you wanna do is open up the aperture, right? And then we can run our snapshots by using the check method, which is going to grab that particular checkpoint. And then we can close our eyes. So it's basically closing back that aperture so that we can collect that information and Apple tools can send it to the cloud. So I'm going to just start off by copying some of this over. We're going to paste this into my application, but I quickly updated it to an import statement where we can see that we're already visiting the page in our browser. So we don't need to go through all that playwright activity. But next let's copy that eyes snippet and let's paste it after this original assertion. Of course, we want to change some of these examples here where we're not going to be opening the Apple Tools website. We can change this to the 100. We can change this to app. 
And we can probably just leave this to home page or home or whatever you really want to call it. But one thing to point out is we're currently targeting the window. And what we're saying is we want to capture that fully. So it's going to grab the entire window to get the full page when it's running this test. If you check out the documentation, you have other examples of ways you can target. If you don't want to capture the entire window, maybe you wanted to ca capture just a particular element. But for now, let's actually open up our terminal and run this test where once it runs, we don't really see anything different. It's still passed. But once we head back to our Apple tools dashboard, if we go ahead and refresh the page or load the latest batches, we should see three new passing tests. Now, why three tests? If we look inside of our Playwright config file, we can see that we have all these different projects set up by default, where it's running on Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. And you can even run mobile viewports if you want. And if you head into Apple tools, we can see actually just that by hovering over our different tests, where we can see this one's on Windows 10 Chrome, our second one is on Firefox, and our third one is on Safari. Now this works fine when we're virtually running these tests locally on these. But just as a quick note, Apple Tools also offers the ultra-fast test cloud, which we're not going to cover today, but gives you a lot more flexibility and customization for how you run your tests on not just those browsers, but a ton of different browsers, different viewports, really whatever you need in order to get that power of cross-browser testing. But back to our dashboard, what we just did is created our new baselines. And what's going to happen is any subsequent test that we run is going to be compared against these baselines. So for instance, if I go inside of my index.js file and I remove this unlock component when I run my tests again, Apple Tools is going to flag that I do now have breaking tests. And if I follow this link, or if I just hit the refresh button again, I can now see these fail tests. And if I look inside, I see all this pink, which means that something changed within those tests. Now, now we can probably play spot the difference and figure out that that unlock component is what's changed, but we can make this even easier for us to figure out what has changed. And we can go up into this toolbar here where we can see show diffs caused by element displacement. And if we click that, Apple Tools is actually going to determine what changed to make that layout shift. It's not going to show us that huge block of pink highlights. It's only going to show us what actually changed in this layout. Now I find this pretty compelling because depending on the change, it can take a while to find all those little intricate changes. But with this, we can make it real easy to actually spot what changed inside of our page. But ultimately we know that this is a bug and this is not what we want. So we want to hit the thumbs down on here to reject that change. And we also want to make sure that we save. And once we add back in our section and run our test, we can see that now if we go ahead and refresh, we have our app back in passing because I added back in that section. But now let's take that a step further where we know that by navigating to one of those pages and taking a snapshot, that's gonna be handy in itself where we're gonna be able to tell a lot as what's happening inside the page. But we wanna actually start to perform actions like our visitors would perform, such as what if we visited this Tech Titans page and we actually start to interact with this unlock signup form. So back to my code, I set up this new test where I'm gonna to go to localhost. I'm going to make sure that it has that page title of the 100 that it's on our homepage. I'm going to then try to find the first article link. And I'm gonna do that by looking for the heading under the latest column. I'm going to then try to find that first element and the text of that element. I'm going to then click on that element so that I can navigate to that article and check that we are actually on that article page. And then finally, I'm going to enter in an email address into the actual text box, click sign up, and hope that we land on the confirm page. Now, if you wanna check out this code, it's all inside of the example that you can find inside of the description. But I commented out our other Apple Tools test and let's just run this to see that it works. So when I run npm run test, we can see that we have our passing tests, which we're able to navigate to this article and actually interact with this form. But while going through those actions and doing so virtually with Playwright, there's a lot of things that we're missing as part of that coverage. What if our little counter here for the 100 logo is messed up? Or what if something like a CSS bug causes the lock form to be completely off the screen like we see here? Where of course I added this here to force this, but just to illustrate the idea where if we're in Playwright, this would still pass because it sees the elements in the page and it's still able to click that. We can use the same methodology that we used for this first test where we're going to open up the eyes, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add multiple checks or checkpoints so that we can establish that we're making sure we're hitting each of those pages and that our pages look the way they should for our visitors every time we make that check. So let's copy this first snippet. We're gonna add our new instance of eyes. This time we wanna make sure that we update the test name where instead of app, let's call this article sign up. And then I'm gonna paste in my first checkpoint where we're still on the homepage so I can leave this at home. Now better yet, we can start to remove some of our code as we no longer need this assertion since we know that we're on the homepage. But what we can do is start to replace the other assertions, such as if we're on the article page, we can now just say that we're checking that we're on that article. And then finally, once we hit that sign up, we can make sure that we're on that confirmation page and get rid of that checkpoint. And now that we don't have to do those playwright checks, we can start to get rid of some of the code and reduce the complexity of our tests. But as one last thing that's pretty important, we wanna make sure that we close our eyes 
every single time we run a test to make sure that we send that information to AppleTools. But now that we run our test again, we'll see our failed tests. And we can see that AppleTools now flags that change. And if we hit the displacement, ignoring the fact that the content changed, which is because I'm just randomizing the post there, which we'll actually cover in a second, we can see that it gets highlighted where that unlock is actually shifting in that UI. Now, coming back to that randomization, in this more from the 100 section, I'm just randomizing the entries in here just to make it look like it's a little bit more realistic and not showing the exact same things every single time. But in a real world with a new news website, these articles are of course going to change all the time. And we wouldn't expect that every single time our content changes, that we're going to get all these flags and have to check our tests every single time, which that's just a huge waste of time. So we actually have a few options for how we can handle this, where the first one is being able to actually ignore a region. To test this out, instead of using those randomized as more example, let's actually randomize all the posts on the homepage. I'm going to first update my post import to post data. I'm going to then add a get server side props function where I'm just going to randomize those posts and send them back as a prop so that I can then add that prop. And then anytime we consume those posts or anytime the page reloads, it's going to be completely randomized for us. We can see exactly that, where if we go back to the homepage and reload the page, we can see that every single time it's going to randomize all those posts. So this is going to give us a good look at how we can actually make sure that if our content changes, it's not going to just break the entire test suite. Now, starting back inside the UI, I have the ability with these annotations that I can select ignore and I can literally just draw a picture around what I want to ignore, whether it's just this one post or that entire row. I even have some options with this, but every time I run a test after this, if I save it, it's going to literally just ignore that space or that block rather. Now this works great, especially if I wanna to stick to the UI and not have to worry about any of the code, but I wanna actually have more control. So I wanna add it to the code. Back to the homepage as the example, if I wanna make sure that anytime this image changes, it actually ignores that section, I can find some kind of interesting selector where maybe I look for this latest and I find the div after it. I look for the UL and I go through down through and I finally find that image. But what else could I do? I can actually just find that item inside of the code where we're working with this image here. So I'm going to add a class name and let's call it the component name post list item image. And that way we can now take this class name and like this example shows, we can chain on ignore region afterwards along with the class name. So on my homepage check statement, I can add ignore regions with an S where we can use ignore region without the S to get just one specific region, but we wanna make sure we hit all those regions. And this time when I run the test with the randomization in place, we can see we get our failed test. And if I start to dig inside and look, this time we can see that we have this blue box around each and every one of those images. And that's because we're ignoring that region. And we're saying that we don't care what's inside of that because we know that's our content. We know that's got to dynamically change. So we want to make sure that that's not going to flag a failing test if that content changes. Now, before we run off and add a class name and ignore it to all the different elements on the page, we have a little bit better way to handle our particular situation. If we head up to the view section here, we click these three dots and we go to preview match level and we change it from strict to layout, we can see that magically all of our failing regions are now gone we can see that we don't have any issues on this page. And the reasoning is because we're now looking for layout changes rather than anything that changes on the page. And this goes the same for any page. So now if I change the preview match le uh, level on this page to layout, we can see that all of our failing regions on this page are gone as well. And it's not because we're hiding them, it's because we're using Apple Tools AI to detect what kind of change is actually happening. Our content change isn't going to change the layout. Apple Tools is able to see that it's a layout change. So the content change isn't going to flag that change. But we can do one better than just having to set that match level every single time inside of our tests. Like ignore regions, we can do this inside of our code. For the first option is we can just chain on to that target like we did before with the dot layout, but we can actually set a match level at the instance level. That way we don't have to do it for every single time. Now that top level match level sounds a little bit better to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that import and add that into my import statement and copy this set match level command and paste it in right after I initialize that new instance. So now when I run that test, we should see all of our tests passing. But just as a hint, if you're hitting timeouts at this point, you can raise your timeout inside of your player config. But if you're using the Apple Tools ultra fast test cloud, you don't need to worry about this because it happens super fast inside of the Apple Tools cloud. But just to again, show that the layout change will still flag if it's an actual layout change, I'm gonna remove unlock. And we can now see this time inside of our test that it did flag that layout change since our test no longer has that. Now the best part is this can be automated with the existing tools you use like github actions which i'm a fan of but their integration with github goes beyond that where you can use branching and different workflows for your team to make sure that this is completely integrated into your existing development flow what's your take on testing are you team tech twitter or do you also think that testing is super important let me know in the comments 
If you want to learn more about testing inside of Next.js, check out this video where I show you how to test serverless functions using Jest. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.